chilling archives of horror comics. Here's a little injury to your eye motif. It's introduced by my good fiend, Dr. Death, a leading health scare provider. <laughs> In the immutable book of nature is written blood the lifespan that is allotted to each poor mortal that dwells on this earth. Tamper with a man's life and you tamper with the angry forces of nature. Justin Westrom chose to permit himself the luxury of murder to appease his greed and expose himself to the inexorable focus of nature's vengeance, the constant eye. No, please, no more. Haven't I paid enough for what I did? Close friendship is often like a beautiful flower, for as long as it lasts, it is a good thing to see. But as the flower withers and dies, so too does the friendship die. Partner, lifelong friends, Mac, I propose a toast to the two of us. May we never be parted, as in life may we be one to the death and beyond. Justin, uh, why? Why? Poison? You slipped it in the glass. Ugh. Sorry, Mac. It had to be. The business isn't big enough for the both of us. This was the only way. In that small instant between life and death, Mac Wilson smothered the pain which tore at him. He summoned the shreds of life that remained to him, fighting off the death rattle so that he might hurl a curse at Justin Westrom. Curse you, Justin. May your turn to rot come soon for taking my life. May the money flow through your fingers like water. May, may, may. I, I'll hold you to your toast, Justin. I'll be your companion to the death and beyond. We'll never part. I'll keep an eye on you. Wherever you go, Justin, I'll... Uh... Why doesn't his eye close? Why does it follow me like that? I know he's dead. He can't touch me now. Justin worked fast. He carried Mac's body through the bush down to the lake. He loaded the body in the boat and rowed out on the lake. You're a heavy man, Mac. And a stubborn one, too. Keeping that eye of yours open won't change things any. So long, Mac. This is the end. From here on in, it's a watery road for you. Goodbye, pal. As Mac's body slipped below the surface of the lake, Justin Westrom got to the first of many shocks that were to be his. For it seemed to Justin, the whirlpool formed had taken onto itself a configuration that was awesome in its detail. No, Mac, stop it. It'll take your eye with you. It's a death. Don't leave it behind to torture me. Oh. Just my nerves, that's all. I gotta get back to the cabin. That's all I need, and I'll be all right. No. Stay away from me. You're not eyes. You're fireflies. You can't fool me this way, Mac. I'm too smart. I'm alive. Alive. And you're dead. I'm a fool. My mind is, uh, playing tricks on me. I'm, I'm letting my imagination get the best of me. Light bulbs hot enough to burn! But as the light bulb swung away on its cord, it dangled like an. yes, an eye. Mac? Let me be, will ya? Stop watching me. Take your eye from me, Mac. What's done is done. Stop it, please. Justin smashed the light bulb into shreds of glass, plunged into complete darkness, he cowered in a corner of the cabin for the rest of the long night of terror. Then. Monsieur Westrom, you wake up if you please. Monsieur Westrom, it is bad. 
Go away, Mac. Let me alone. <clears throat> Mac, stop. Oh, Jacques. Uh, for a minute, I thought that that is um. Forget it. Monsieur Westrum, it is very bad. I have found Monsieur Wilson's body down at the lake. He is dead! The excited guide took Justin Westrum down to the lake to show him where he had found Mac Wilson's body. The boat could be seen floating out on the lake. It was a peaceful scene. Mac Wilson and I stayed up late last night on a drinking bout. He got the crazy notion to go out fishing. He must have fallen overboard. That odd bothers me. It doesn't look right being open like that. Almost as if Mac was watching me. See if you can close it, Jock. But there was to be no closing of that constant eye of Mac Wilson's. Later at the funeral parlor. This is the room, Mr. Westrom. We tried, believe me, to give his face a peaceful look, but we had one difficulty. Yes, yes, I know. That cursed eye, trying to tear its way out of the socket. Keeping an eye on things, he said. Mac Wilson's not the kind that gives up easily. Later at the funeral, for which Justin was a pallbearer, no relief for the killer. When the others had left, Justin hung behind uneasily. A bouquet of roses had been tossed on the fresh grave by some friend. It's in my imagination. Those flowers, the wind shaking them. I am mad. I can deny it longer, for I, I think I see a full-blown eye on a stem waving at me, watching me. Justin Westrom had no peace in the days that followed. The constant eye was everywhere. The hard-boiled egg in his hand became a fluid, twisting eye. At least I've got this pleasure left. When I lock the door, that is, I, I can read a book. And I can eat. And Mac Wilson can't get at me. Ah! An eyeball! Away! Get out of my sight! Stay away and leave me be! Haven't I been watched enough? Justin Westrom could take it no longer. He went out to the cemetery one night, stood trembling before Mac's grave. Mac! I'm pleading with you! You gotta give me a break! What's done is done! Turn off the eye, Mac! Take it back into the grave with you! Uh, hello, Justin? It's good to see that you've come back to sit a while with your old friend. Voice. Mac's voice. No. Mac! One of your eyeballs is gone. Naturally, Justin. It has been watching you constantly. The empty socket in Mac Wilson's head was a circle of temptation for Justin. It drew him like a magnet. He suffered a burning desire to peer within its darkness, to penetrate its mystery. And suddenly the spell was broken and terror struck. You won't get me! You won't! You won't! You won't! Justin ran blindly through the cemetery, his feet sinking into the spongy earth over the graves. His breath came in hoarse gasps like the death rattle, and his lungs ached with pain. Finally exhausted, he sank to the ground. I've been dying for a smoke, Justin. That is, if a dead man can die for anything. (laughs) Let me have a cigarette. My my right pocket. Your heart must have been strained somewhat by that little run, Justin. You wouldn't believe it, Justin, but I fought my way back from the world of the dead just to be by your side. And do you know why, Justin? Because I'm determined to see that you keep the toast you made the night you poisoned me. That we never part in life or death. That we be one even beyond the grave. Justin shuddered, as if each of Mac Wilson's words was a knife cutting into his flesh. A knife that had been dipped into the moist gall of death. I was able to get my whole body across the dividing line when I promised to deliver you to the world of the dead, Justin. 
Fair warning, Justin. Maintain eternal vigilance. For the moment that you weaken, I'm going to drag you across the boundary line into the world of the dead. Now it's my turn. I'll be your constant companion instead of my eye. I'll get my revenge! Justin Westrom struggled to his feet and lashed out at his decaying tormentor. Then, screaming in terror, he ran from the cemetery. Once in his apartment, he bolted the door and closeted himself deep within its confines. I've got you licked now, Mac. You can't get at me in here. I'll beat you at last. I'll hole out here until your wor world freezes over. <laughs> I always had it over you, Mac. I was the brains of the out. The eyes. They followed me even here. There is no stopping them then. Justin was paralyzed with fear. For as he stood there, a section of the wallpaper began to bulge out, and there was a ripping sound as if an imprisoned being was trying to escape. Make ready with your famous hospitality, Justin. I've come to join you for a quiet evening. You, even here. Uh, I'll take a room in that hotel. Justin checked in at a hotel and did not stir from his room for a week. Finally, no longer able to stand himself in post-prison, needing a change desperately, Justin sneaked out into the hall. Mac, don't toy with me any longer. Take me, only give me some peace, let me rest. Hey, what's that? You kidding me, fella? Hey, that's pretty good. You were fooled by my costume, weren't you? Oh, you gotta come with me now. We got a masquerade party cooking, that's a wow. And you're a natural for it, even if you're not down here for the convention of umbrella salesmen. Fate chose to exercise its grisly sense of humor. The pressure only seemed to be taken off, but the screws were turned tight on Justin when he met a pretty girl at a masquerade party. I think we'll find it cooler out here on the terrace, and we can be alone. I was in luck to meet you. You take my mind off other things. Over here, where we can get a good look at the city. Say, it's a little dangerous going so close to the edge. We'd better be careful. Justin felt his flesh creep. Somewhere a warning sounded, and a horrible suspicion began to grow in his mind, feeding on the terror and the dread there. Just a second. Who are you? Take off that mask and be quick about it. All right, if you wish. No! Sure, it's me, Mac Wilson. Over that edge, Justin and you join me in the beyond. We'll be as one in death. Justin bolted. He tore out of the hotel, ran down the street, and grabbed a cab in hasty panic. The cab roared away from the curb, shot through the city streets, nearly missing accident after accident. Hey, what gives, cabby? Are you trying to kill us or something? You better drive more carefully. Say, wait a second. Mac! If I can't get you one way, Justin, I'll get you another. I'm a patient man. Justin lunged over the barrier that separated him from the front seat. He grappled with Mac Wilson as he reached for the emergency brake. It's no use, Justin. You'll pay with your life for poisoning me. No, you'll never get me. Never. The tormented Justin Western ran blindly, the screen curdling in the froth that formed in his lips. He needed help desperately. He could no longer fight off the living death that was Mac Wilson himself. Officer, you've got to help me. A dead man is trying to murder me. He says I'm his buddy. He says, Mac! There is no escape, Justin. The evil, foul cadaver of Mac Wilson was everywhere. He was in the air that Justin struggled to suck into his lungs. He was the ground under Justin's pounding feet. Hey, wait for me! Would you like to take a ride with me, Justin? This bus is an express. Our first and only stop is the world of the dead. Mac! There is no escape, apparently. Mac's words echoed with the finality of truth and death. It was a sad and weary murderer whose dragging footsteps made a path to the comforting warmth and light of an all-night diner. Let me have a cup of hot black coffee, will you, buddy? I'm always to be tormented this way. No relief. No end in sight. 
ever to be washed by the constant eye. You're weakening, Justin. In a little while, you're going to come to me and beg me to take your hand and lead you across into the world of the dead! Justin Westrom was exhausted. He was drained of hope and of strength. Only terror prodded him into moving his leaden feet. Sighing bitterly, he slumped against the moist brick wall of an alley. Maybe Max is right. Maybe I ought to give up and go with him. And pay for taking his life of my own. I don't know anymore. There is no place left for me to hide. No matter where I go, in what dark corner, Max's eye is there to watch me. Justin felt a choking feeling mounting within him. The inner dam burst in his pent-up fears, and frustration spilled over. In a terrible rage, Justin Westrom rebelled against his fate. No! No, I won't give up! I'll fight and I'll destroy, and I'll kill again if I have to, but I won't go with a dead man! It's disappearing. The eye is gone. It's destroyed. A realization of what he had finally been able to do hit Justin. He had beat Mac Wilson's eye this once. He could do it again. He wasn't afraid anymore. I beat him. Now I'll blot him and his cursed eye out for good. I'll go right to the source of the eye. The place where I first saw it after I murdered Mac. The lake. And in destroying the lake, I'll destroy the eye that has spied on my every move. Justin's twisted mind, the origin of the constant eye, lay in the waters of the lake and he intended to wipe that lake from the surface of the earth. Justin moved fast. He hired a contractor and went to work. Every drop of water must go. That lake bed must be bone dry when you're finished. You're the boss, Mr. Westrom. That's the way it'll be. But the emptying of the lake by normal means wasn't fast enough for Justin, and he was forced to desperate measures. I hope you realize, Mr. Westrom, that using these pumps and trucking that water out here is going to run into a lot of money. I don't care about the expense. I'll spend every cent I have if it's necessary. The job of draining the lake completely dry seemed to be endless, for the lake was stubborn and seemed to struggle to refill itself, scornful of the modern technology that Justin was bringing to bear. My bank account is going dry quicker than the lake. She's a tough nut to crack, Mr. Westrom. And there's a good reason for it. I'm pretty sure the lake is being fed out there by an underground spring almost as fast as we can take the water out. Yes, that would be the spot. Right where I slipped Max's body into the lake. When I first saw the eye. Every cent I have goes into finishing this job. I want that spring capped. Block off that water with a concrete pile. Sink it below lake bottom. Already heavily in debt. Justin mortgaged a motor manufacturing business for which he had killed Mac Wilson. Not only was he burying every cent of his own in the lake, but the blood money he had murdered for, too. The boss says this crazy job is costing a fortune. Who knows? Something must be eating away at the guy who's footing the bills. Maybe he's building himself a tombstone out here. All I have to do is wait for the concrete to harden and the spring will be dammed up. The lake will be gone, the eye destroyed, and along with it, Mac Wilson. I'll be free forever. Finally, all the concrete was poured. The contractor and his men packed up and moved out. Justin believed that he had won. But that last night... I want to gloat and watch the concrete harden. I want to know that I am sealing the eye and Mac Wilson into the world of the dead. No. I'm going mad. It's not the moon up in the sky. It's the eye. The eye. And all of this was for nothing. There is no escape. I can't look at the eye anymore. Help! Ah! Justin hit the concrete with a liquid, sucking sound. The still, soft concrete gripped him like a relentless, hungry mouth swallowing. No! Somebody hear me! There's still time! I, I can be saved! I can be saved! I can be saved! Thus did the murderer go to his death. He had been kept to the word of his toast of eternal friendship by the man he had killed. And Justin Westrom joined his victim in the world 
ABADAH